All right. All right. All right. Oh. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, is that the is that the marriage? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The newlywed yeah. game that we won last night. Um, we should take it home so we wonderful. can like, do these games. Questions. Hey, real quick. I um, uh, just want to talk about a few of these things. Um, we have these not because we're necessarily trying to sell stuff, but at the oh, same yes, time, we are. We we're are. trying to get rid of yeah. those. So Florida is starting to get warmer, and so yeah. we <laughs> we don't need them anymore. <laughs> so we were sent with some of this stuff, but. Uh, this is just we what would we start call to wear this in like 40, 50 degree weather. <laughs> like 65 degrees, yeah. we, honestly. We pull out boots and stuff and people laugh at us that we're from the north or colder. I areas. was trying to be like you guys. Notice I just have on a shirt and a little uh, vest. vest thing, but I did have my coat outside. So <laughs> um, anyways, these, I think we normally sell these for 38, but for this week we're selling them for 30. Um, they're very comfortable. Um, we call them our crown life <laughs> shirts. They're very the soft. Uh, very soft. Pink. Oh, okay, yeah, somebody wants, I don't two. know what size it was. Let me see the sizes. Go ahead, give, give something three. away. Um, give one away. Don't want to spend too much time. That's a large. large. Anybody's Anybody a large? A black large? He's a large right there. Go ahead, give it to him right there. Thank you very much. And uh, Large, this is a large. Large. Ladies want uh, a man could want that too. I have a, a pink one. A man could want it. Yeah, you do have a pink one. Sorry, large. Anybody wants a I large? Think <laughs> you guys don't like free stuff? Wow, <laughs> she'll take a you large. All right. Take, or take it for someone else. Like, okay, buy it for someone else. If you don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> take it. Take it, girl. <laughs> um, if you want wear it, buy it for your children and your grandchildren, okay? Because hey, they'll love it. Uh, we are on Facebook Live, so come back. Small. Small. All right. Crown life, kingdom life, the life of the kingdom. <laughs> All right. And then this, uh, this is a flash drive that we have here. Um, we call it the Winning in Relationships MP3 set. And on here has a few series. There's a series that we did. I think all three of these or two of these. We these are not cassettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put this in your cassette tape, you know. <laughs> these are flash drives. Does anybody drives. still have a cassette player? Oh, my gosh. It's like retro now. Um, so, anyways, uh, this we cover. We have a series called This Is Us, um, which was a really popular series in our church where we did it together um, on relationships. And then another one called Five Steps to Effective Communication uh, on there. I think all of these are like five weeks of teaching that we did. And another one called Growing Greater Relationships. And so these are $30 on there. I will give this one free to anybody. I saw his hand first. Can, <laughs> I don't know. Can I? Let me try. Everybody, everybody be alert. Oh, look at that. Did you catch it? Oh, my gosh. It was a perfect pass, too. Perfect Frisbee pass. <laughs> he said, I'm so disappointed in myself. <laughs> All right, cool. So um, let's go ahead. Hey, if y'all want to do um, a, f a favor to, uh, oh, sorry, welcome into Facebook. Hey, you can pull out your phones right now if you don't get distracted and share this live stream to your friends and everything like that. Just, um, you know, it's a blessing. You're like, don't get like, well, we paid to be here um, and others get to watch for free. Uh, if you are watching for free, we encourage you to send an offering to Midwest Believers Church. Yes. Um, there are prompts. You can go to MidwestBelievers.org, MidwestBelieversChurch.org, and uh, sow a seed on there, um, and it'll be a blessing to you as well. So, um, And everybody's pulling it out, so that's why we're hearing the live stream. You can turn your volumes down if you can, <laughs> um, but you just hit the share button, button, hit button. the share button, and... Um, and that way we can share with it. So, all right, ladies, you guys had a good session the last time? Yes. Isn't she wonderful? She is so amazing. Oh, my gosh. Um, she's really good. And, um, and so we're just so glad that you guys were able to. What's too far? Oh, I'll down there. The floor, yeah. You're going to share it, too, as well? You can pull up your Facebook and oh, share it? Oh, sure. Yeah, there might be people that want to do that. All right, so what did y'all talk about, ladies? Tell me. Uh. Oh. <laughs> They said we can't, huh? <laughs> attributes of love. Yeah. All right, attributes of love. And that's what we want to talk about. Again, um, I don't know if she did this, but we went back over 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 4 to 8. We read mm, that. Did you do that? That would have been good. You went straight into it? All right. <laughs> Just went straight for the jugular. Let's get, let's get to it. But again, um, you know, uh, 
University of Illinois playing again tomorrow, right? Is that is that correct? Are they so really? So they watched their game film. I'm sure they watched it last night and going over some things even today as far as stuff. And I don't know if anybody here went over their game film, but actually these scriptures are scriptures that you can and should take every day and meditate on it. Yes. Right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Love never is envious. No bowls over jealousy. It's not vainglorious. It's, uh, it's not boastful. It does not display itself haughtily. It's not conceited, arrogant, inflated with pride, so forth and so on. We, we know that. But... Again, I love the Spirit-Filled Life Bible, how it says, love suffers long, having patience with imperfect people. Yes. And love is kind and active in doing good. So again, as, we were, as our men, we were talking, and we were talking about being intentional and how we have to be active yes. in our, you know, I don't know how well you taught this thing, <laughs> but how we got to be active. And so um, active in doing good, active in doing good to your spouses. And uh, I even brought up uh, how... Brother Hagen, you know, even as men, how important it is that we walk in love. And I would say this, too, for the ladies. Brother Hagen talked about even ministers that he would get around. And yeah. he said they would be together in a circle and they'll be talking. And, and one of them would say, man, I tell you what, if I get home and my wife doesn't have a hot meal, she'll have a lot to pay. Mm -hmm. I won't say what he said. I said it towards the men. Um, I won't say exactly what he said. But he said, and other men did that. He said, I noticed that most of those men. Actually, the, the ones he was talking about, he said not one of them lived past the age of 50. Wow. And so God takes it seriously how we walk in love towards others, but especially towards our spouse. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so um, there is this importance, this, this importance that we have to put on walking in the God kind of love and not just being hearers to be like, well, amen, and that's good, and, and yeah, that's right, and once she's listening or once he's listening, <laughs> but where we got to be doers of the word. James 1 says if we're just hearers of the word and not doers, we are... Um, we're deceiving ourselves. We're, we're walking in self-deception. And, and it says that if you're just one of those that just glances at the word and, you know, you immediately walk away and forget your divine origin. In other words, what God placed on the inside of you. Do I have any new creatures in Christ in here? Amen. Yeah, a bunch of new creatures, new creations in Christ that we've been, he's placed his love, his nature, his ability on the oh, inside yeah. of us. So we have the ability to love the way that he loves. Yes. And so... Um, just for those who were, if you join us on Facebook Live, again, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I know it's a Saturday, but um, uh, thanks for being with us. So we're just going to give you the first two attributes of love because we went over it in our breakout sessions where we apologize that we uh, could not do that um, with you. I don't know how personal you got. Did you get real personal? Um. I don't know if Did you embarrass personal. me? That's, that's the question. Did you, <laughs> did you embarrass no. yourself? No. Did you embarrass me? No. Is she lying, ladies? I'm not. I'm, oh, look at, look at how y'all <laughs> jumped to her. No. <laughs> I'm just messing. No. These are honest, God fearing women. Okay? Is this my water or yours? Yours, mine. Oh. What's mine is ours. Whatever. Yours is down there, but. No, that's mine, actually. But oh, okay. okay. What's, but what's mine is. Yours what's and what's yours, yours is, is mine, and what's mine is ours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Noted. Um, <laughs> so we said this, and I think she said this too, that talking about the different attributes of love, the God kind of love. Yeah. Um, the first one was what? Get Notice my men were the first ones to answer. <laughs> Y'all are making me so proud. Oh, well, it's on the inside. It's <laughs> noted on the stone of their heart, on ah, the uh, tablet of right? their heart. Yeah, <laughs> Giving love. Very good. And that is one of the most uh, important characteristics of true love is that it's one that gives. Yes. Right? And then number two was what? Oh, don't try to get so yes. loud now. Yes. I heard my man. <laughs> sacrificial love. We know it's sacrificial. <laughs> sacrificial. Do you want to touch on that some? Because I felt like you were trying to rush to the third point. You, uh -oh, were, no, he you want to touch on that some? Yes, we <laughs> yes, I felt did. like you didn't finish. <laughs> no, um I I brought it into what I was finishing. Okay. So but um yeah, I mean, as I said before, sacrificial love is uh, love is sacrificial. It's it's sacrificing um you know, your own desires, your own wants, your own rights even at times. And sometimes that's kind of hard to uh, swallow, uh, naturally speaking, in our flesh because um, there are times where it's like, you can be right but be wrong about being right. You know what I mean? 
In other words, you might be right in the argument, but the way you're handling it is wrong. Or you might be right in the Well, the fight. reason why you're <laughs> handling it wrong is because, men, we, we know we're always right. And so <laughs> that's, why, that's why that happens. Am it, I, it's, am I more like, the truth? it's more like, you no. know, it's like the mugs that I've seen, one in a, a set of mugs that I've seen in a store. It that's, was like. I'm sorry. Men weren't answering, but then <laughs> there was a point where they're like. <laughs> Like I ain't crazy, but I'm gonna let you know. We're not gonna say you who ain't it crazy is. either. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's more like um, I'm kidding. what a, a set of mugs I saw in a store said it said Mr. Right, and then the accompanying mug said Mrs. Always Right. So it's kind of more like that. But either way, whether you're the one that thinks you're always right. I mean, I always tell my husband this, like, I wouldn't be arguing if I didn't think I was right. Like, I don't just argue for the fun of it. I used to, but I don't do that anymore, you know? So, like, <laughs> I don't just argue for the fun of it. I'm arguing because I think I'm right. So, of right. course, because my husband's always like, you're always wrong and strong. And I'm like, who does that? Like, I, if I know I'm wrong, I'm not going to be strong she about it. She thinks she's right, <laughs> but it's just that I tend to be right. <laughs> not all the time, but just most of the time. Let's he feels he feels it's most of the time. I mean, we all so feel anyway, like we're right. yeah. but we just don't acknowledge when I'm right. You know, I just <laughs> okay. <laughs> but either way, I'm willing to acknowledge if I'm wrong. But if I feel I'm right, I'm right, right. So, but the sacrificial part comes where you know sometimes we in, we want to insist on our own rights. Like you have a right to be, as I said yesterday, and and really, you know, there's sometimes where it's just better not to. You know, things will work out better. Sometimes you have to think of, well, what will be the outcome of this? And, or what is my motive in this? Sometimes we'll find that our motive is rooted in pride. Yeah, that's true. And good. Um, pride is a very sneaky, sneaky thing. It yeah. actually is so subtle. It can show up. Do you know pride is the root of offense? Mm. If you think about it, most times that you're offended, and that's not just with your spouse, that could be with anybody, but if you go back to being offended at something someone said, it usually, if you really trace it and the thoughts behind it, like in other words, what were you saying as a result to get you to that place of being offended or where you felt offended? If you trace it, you'll see that it was most likely thoughts like, who do they think they are? Or who do they think they're talking to? And I'm not going to, you know, like I'm this and I'm that. You know, they, they think, they must think that I'm this or I'm that or blah, 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 blah. It, that's rooted in pride. Yeah. And when you really think about it, you know, that's, uh, I don't know of any other way of crucifying the flesh than to get out of pride. Like, because, and, and pride is, is so much, um, it affects, it's, it's very destructive yeah. and it's so much a part of yielding to that fleshly nature. And so um, I think that's the greatest challenge of every believer because Jesus said, you're going to have to pick up your cross and follow me. And right. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that has to be nailed to the cross, you know, and it involves a lot of it involves our flesh. Right. Pride, pride would even hinder this issue of submission. Oh, yes. Because, um, you yes. know, people will talk about how, oh, I'm, I'm submissive yep. um, until it's something that you don't agree with. Right. Well, that's not submission. If if if, if it's something you, you agree agreed, with, that's agreement. Just yeah. But submission, if it's I mean, it's true submission when you don't agree and you still yield. And what Are we I good? love. <laughs> Y'all here with me? What I love about this, though, is if you have a relationship with the Lord and if your spouse does in this case, um, and even if your spouse doesn't, it, God has ways. He knows. He knows how to get to people. Yeah. Okay. But even if you, if you're, if you have that relationship with the Lord, it amazes me how many people, how many times we don't actually go to the Lord. We don't actually ask Him for His help and ask Him. Maybe it's wisdom that you need on how to reach your spouse in this matter, or maybe it's not even wisdom, but it's like, Lord, I've tried to get through to them, and I really believe I'm right. But, you know, even if I'm not, let's say I'm, I may not be, maybe I'm missing some things. Help me to see what they're seeing. Help me to understand what they're understanding. And if, if I'm the wrong one, just help me to make that adjustment, right, to, to make it right. And then, but if they're the wrong one, show them. Mm. You show them. God knows how to reach them because he knows them. Right. So when you make room for God to move like that, 
he'll move. And you're asking him to. And that brings glory to him. So he's glorified. Everybody, I don't know why we, it takes us so long to learn this. When we do things God's way, everybody wins. Right. You get better, your, your spouse gets better, right? And things work out and God gets the glory. Everybody wins in this. So why not just go to him? Like if you're not used to that, start practicing it. And it doesn't have to be an in-depth in your prayer closet. Sometimes it may, you know. Sometimes it might be an all-night thing or whatever, but, or uh, something that takes a little bit more time. But sometimes it could just simply be. I love those times when God answers prayers and it's, it's a simple prayer. Sometimes I have prayers within myself. I didn't even say it out loud. And God answers. Yeah. And I'm thankful for that. So he'll do it in this too. What I'm going to do uh, at this time is yeah. I'm going to give you the different points because honestly, we don't have enough time to cover all of this. Um, we are putting this into a book form, yeah. um, which the plan is to be released by June 30th of mm -hmm. this year. Um, so we'll be releasing it on Amazon and different things like that as well. So we apologize, and we're not even sharing this just because. We're, we're thankful for this opportunity because um, we were working on, uh, you know, <clears throat> when I said we were working on a book, we knew we were going to do the book, so this is helping us to get it out. You know, <laughs> not get the book out, but get, you're, you're helping us to write the book right now just by <laughs> allowing us to teach um, on it. So, um, so that'll be available to anybody if they wanted. We don't have any pre-order forms or anything like that. We're, we're just going to be real low-key with it, right, and yeah. just... Whoever wants it will get it. So I'll give you this, and then we'll come back to it. Uh, number three. Point number three is um, serving love or love that serves, mm -hmm. right? Uh, number four is um, love freely given. Number five, submissive love. We talked a little bit about that last night. Numero seis. Mm -mm. I'm multilingual. Supporting love. <laughs> Number six. Set. I don't know how to say number in French. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number. <laughs> Set. <laughs> no? <laughs> Is that how? I'm pretty sure that's not it. Okay. <laughs> pretty sure. I took French and I don't remember right now. No. I'm pretty sure it's not. Number seven. Kind love. <laughs> Number eight. Understanding. Mm. Number nine, laboring. Number 10, gentle. Number 11, forgiving. All right? So let's go back to number three. Uh, if you didn't get it all, just ask your neighbor next to you um, who was a little faster than you were. And um, they can help. So, uh, so the first two we did was giving love or love that gives. Mm -hmm. um, and then number two was sacrificial, sacrificial. love. And, and as we said, love by definition must be sacrificial for it to be true love. Yeah. Right? So now we want to get to um, serving love. And the thing is, marriage only works when we serve each other. Right? It only works when we serve each other. Um, I actually asked um, this question. You know, from guys as far as, you know, by show of hands, how many of them had, uh, you know, if they had both parents in the home, like one parent was more domineering or more dominant than the other. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, a few raised their hand and, and then I asked, you know, based upon that, how was that atmosphere in the home? And, you know, it was yeah. very tough and very rough and, and all that. And, of course, that can be a learned trait, but it's also one that we can kind of, um, pick up on our own, yeah, yeah. but you can undo it. You know, um, I'm thankful for the example that my parents set before me. Uh, my dad, he didn't have his father in his life. His, I mean, Papa was a Rolling Stone, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so seriously, he had kids all over the place on different islands. Uh, you know, I mean, we are still meeting family members <laughs> to this day. The, he's, he's dead and gone, but, you know, still meeting family members that we don't know. So he didn't have that, but when he got saved and he got married, he determined that I was going to be an example for my kids, even though he may not have had a good example before him, but yet we can see from the Word of The Word of God has so much wrapped up into it that will help us and, and enable us to live the life that God really wants us to live. And I have. mean, and the love of God yeah. in us is so 
overwhelmingly, it really amazes me how his dad can lead a life where he loves his children and he has more than just his natural children. He has many adopted children um, that are not, not adopted not legally, legally adopted, but yeah. like spiritually adopted children. And um, his love is just endless. And it's amazing. So it's a perfect example, actually, of God's love in us really can transform us and it should transform us. So it doesn't really matter your background. It doesn't really matter. Thank God that, you know, whether you had a bad background or a messed up background, it doesn't matter because God can change it and he will if you'll allow him to right and so he's he's a great example of that he really does almost to a fault sometimes you know it's like that's not love you're enabling people now you know but (laughs) but he's so compassionate and so loving and so open um open-hearted to so many and um you know he has especially his children and so that's a a good thing but the serving love you know um i remember hearing brother hagan going back and listening to uh different messages he would say um, you know, as far as in their marriage and his marriage, you know, um, for him and his wife, they would compete with one another as far as competing with who can out love the other one more, you know, and I thought when I first heard that, I thought that was a, gr- that's a great competition because we're competitive. And, um, so I was like, that's a great competition to have. And, um, so we started, we determined because we heard that we said, we're going to determine to, Um, make this something in our marriage too. We're going to compete to love each other. And what happens is subconsciously, now we we take it overboard, like we're very silly with it sometimes, like we... (laughs) If we're sharing a drink or something, I'll leave like a, a little bit left for him. And he we re- refuse to be the last one to finish it. So like we'll just leave these little drops and it's like, oh, there's still more. There's still more. He's like, <laughs> so just we're trying to see goofy. who's, who's being selfish, you know. But honestly, it's <laughs> when we serve one another, it's not a me first attitude. Right. And I know I, I want to say this because uh, what happens is I know that um, most people, women have this tendency and it's almost natural for you to be that way, to be serving. And um, whether, depending on the kind of home you came from, like if you were, um, if you grew up in a home where your mom was constantly serving and she served everyone else and it was totally out of balance to the place where she never did anything for herself, you, you might have grown up and said, that's never going to be me, I'm not going to be that. And you might have gone in the other side of the ditch, you know, like where you're totally like, no, me first kind of thing because you just don't want to be end up like your mom because you saw how run down she was and how all these things, she always putting everybody before her. And I understand that there's a balance is what I'm getting to. There is a balance to to this. Obviously, you cannot be um, beneficial to your spouse and to your family if you're not healthy yourself, just like in anything else. You know, you're called to ministry. Uh, You can't be effective in ministry if if your family is not, and you yourself, and you're not healthy, you know, and that's healthy all through and through. Man, that's why you should let her go take care of her crusty toes, you know, if her... (laughs) Her toes starts no, looking he didn't like say this. Crusty. You know, if her toes are looking like this. I almost like said, your mama got crusty toes. <laughs> your mama got crusty toes. Uh, we joke like that. It's just a joke. <laughs> but, but um, honestly, like I remember when I when I we first started having kids. You know, like because it's easy when you don't have kids. You know, but like when we first started having kids. It's like I had no time for myself, especially when you're breastfeeding, and it's like, oh my God, you just feel like a milk factory and. It's like, you know, your, your children need you, literally need your body, your, your husband needs your body, and it's like, oh my God, like, can y'all just leave me alone? <laughs> Don't touch me. The Bible me. says <laughs> it should satisfy me at all He loves times. using that verse. I'm just a person of the word. That's, is, is that not in the Bible? So Let her breast satisfy you at I just think it's really weird. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord, I hear you. Thank you, Jesus. He would get literally oh, be so God. jealous of my children. I sure would. Feeding. I'd be like, he's like, I wish that was me. <laughs> Can you turn around and mind your own business? Why is he hogging it all? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody needs that much milk. <laughs> y'all, I I'm gonna tell y'all a side story. This is hilarious, okay? <laughs> One day I was leaking so bad and it was, uh, my milk was so precious because I was struggling with breastfeeding and I'm like, I was struggling so bad and one day it was dripping and I was, and it was coming out and he was so afraid to tell me because he didn't want me to freak out. And finally when he told me, I was like, we were spending time together. (laughs) That's just. And so when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, go get a cup and I'm running. (laughs) Get a cup, save the milk. And he's like. 
like, I, he's like, I got a confession, honey. After we like cleaned up and everything, he's like, I got a confession. I saw it for minutes and I debated, should I? Because he was enjoying this moment. He's like, we were should I tell her or should time, I just not you know? tell her? And he's like, I was like, I can't believe you. You know how much of a struggle it is to get one drop. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, I've got like these friends that are like literally popping them out and like freezing several bags. And I'm like, I can't get one bag. But anyway, um, <laughs> but um, uh, what, did we, what were we talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but I'm liking where this is going. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm so loving this oh, right now. Oh, serving, serving. Yeah. <laughs> serving one another in our <laughs> love being serving and really not, it's really preferring the yeah. others. Isn't speaking that what of, God called us to anyway? Speaking of serving and giving and, and, and sacrificial, um, I actually saw that you guys have a date night um, coming up and I saw the paper. I know, you know. Oh, me, for couples? For couples, yeah. Oh. So I encourage you to sign up. Your pastors didn't ask me to say this. I'm just, I'm just saying it. You might not like What's it called? Rib, uh, ribeye? I mean, it sounds like a good place to me, but, you know, <laughs> the ribeye. But I, I would just say, I, I'll tell you this. We're not perfect at it, but we, we try to do what we call 777. Mm -hmm. Every seven days we take, uh, we go on a date. Every seven weeks, that hasn't happened, but we take like a little in town. I think that happened once. Uh, a few times. <laughs> um, like I said, we haven't perfected it, but every seven weeks we just do like a short in town trip or something, just maybe two nights or something. You know, there's all kinds of different things where you can find good, especially where we live. You can get inexpensive hotels, you know, it's tourists. Hot wire. Place, hot wire. <laughs> and, uh, price line, Expedia, price you know. Line. Uh, um, so just something where you can get something nice for a decent price. Um, and then every seven months, um, just something a little bit longer. We haven't getaway. perfected that. Yeah, getaway. We haven't perfected it, but it's still something to strive to. Mm -hmm. But we do strive to do a date night. So for instance, Thursday evenings is our date night. For the most part, um, you know, during the pandemic, it did make it a little bit difficult, but we still did it. It's a lot of work because honestly, we come home and we're like, sometimes we're just so tired, you know. You still want to go? She's like, I never wanted to go anyways, <laughs> you know, because you're just tired. <laughs> you know, for me, I don't know what it is. I go up to my room to change, and I, my Especially body automatically sees that bed, and it just, it's over. I don't understand. My going. body just all of a sudden turns and goes and lays on the bed, <laughs> and it's like, oh my gosh. But we see the importance of it, and it's being intentional. So Thursday nights, if somebody tries to do something, I'm so, you know, I'm sorry, I have, in my calendar, I have an appointment. Yep. That's an appointment with my wife, right? It's booked. It's booked. booked. So that means I got to get a babysitter, um, you know, or we just leave the kids by themselves to and there have been many times we fend failed for themselves. That, no, I'm kidding. We never did that. We never did that. <laughs> we have never done that, you know. But even if we couldn't go somewhere, then to do something, some of the best dates have been the cheapest ones. Mm -hmm. The best, you know, yeah. just, just the cheapest ones. As far as it didn't cost anything, the sushi or sushi check uh, takeout, and just right there on the living room floor, we made a little picnic. You know, made the kids go to bed. <laughs> and she was—I remember this. She was fussing about it that day. Remember yeah, you were fussing? Was like, she was like, "Oh, oh my gosh, gosh this, this is gonna bad. be so bad," and everything. And you know, just picked up some takeout and just set it in the living room. We—I don't we remember. Did a what, candle light. I don't remember where the kids were. If we locked them in the closet or what, or just hey. Go somewhere. No, go. I actually think somebody came by to get them or something. I don't remember. Yeah, someone in town. And we just believe God for the right yeah. pe people, people that love our kids yeah. and everything. Of course, you want to be safe with that. But um, that was such an enjoyable date and time. Yeah. And, you know, because um, as I was saying to, uh, to the men, you know, I refuse to, even in speaking with the Lord, I, I believe that he likes it. Because we all know this, uh, at least we should, that in order of priority should be our relationship with God first, then our relationship with our spouse than kids. I know a lot of people have it backwards. And what happens is when you focus so much on the kids, they end up leaving. You're just there to raise them to get out. To leave, yeah. To leave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, honestly, I know it sounds bad. We're to train them up to go. They got to go. I mean, <laughs> my 12-year-old, I'm like, is it not time yet for you to go? I mean, <laughs> you know, it's, you know you're, not, you're not ready. Um, <laughs> But because we did talk about that with our uh, our older the kids. eldest ones. Yeah. Oh my gosh! I was like, we just got rid of one, and then the other ones coming. Oh, I know. Man. Yes, praise but, the Lord. Um, <laughs> praise God. But it's so true, and honestly, um, we find that 
to be ha to happen too often yeah where um you get so wrapped up and caught up in your kids lives that you don't even know each other because you change all, all the time yes. right so over the years you change it's that empty nest syndrome so they yeah. leave and it's like you don't even know each other who anymore. did i marry <laughs> you know it's like because everything was so centered around the kids, you know, you got, you got basketball practice, soccer practice, you know, band rehearsal and this and that. And everything is just around well, them. And not just that. You just have so much to do to train them up. You yeah. Know, there's so much. And it's very difficult, especially when they're young. But even even when they're getting closer to that time where you know they're going to move out soon. And it's yeah. like, oh, my God, I can't imagine this. Did I do everything right? You know. And, and listen, we're honored to be up here because we know many of you have been married longer than we have. And, oh, yeah. Um, have so much more experience. And so. Um, you know, we're confident in the anointing of God upon our lives, but we're not trying to think like, oh, we got this down packed better than everybody else. Absolutely because not. <laughs> honestly, even with our kids, I'm like, are we even doing well? I mean, Lord, yeah. you know, I Thank mean, God for the Holy Ghost and, <laughs> and resources. Grace. Yes. Just this morning I woke up and the Holy Ghost said, focus on the family, you know, that ministry. And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. I need to get those tools and stuff yeah. and focus on that because sometimes, if, again, if you're not intentional, that's right. with anything, it's not going to be good for you. You're going to wind up saying, how did this happen? But nothing just suddenly happens, yeah. right? It's, it's so important, and even to the point where our kids may not always like it, but we'll say things like, um, if you want mommy and daddy to be better mommy and daddies, yeah. you need to let us go, yeah. right? That's for the so, younger couples that have the yeah. little kids, you know? Or if you don't have kids yet. You got to get it in. And ladies, well, it's not only ladies. Some men are just so clingy to their kids as well that yeah. we've seen that relationships are affected because, mm -hmm. you know, guys, they will be all right. Yeah, they're going to be fine. They'll, you know, trust the Holy Spirit. We've had it all. You know, I'm not saying to trust everybody, but you can trust the Holy Ghost <laughs> as far as. As and far believe as him for the right people yeah. to be in their to be in their lives and to be in your life to help you. That's what we did by yeah. faith. Yeah. And I'm thanking God for that because if they didn't, I wouldn't be able to leave. You know. Right. And so. We'll so, um, so uh, the rib ribeye. I just want to encourage you. Uh, we're talking about giving and sacrificial. It might seem like well, it's not convenient. Date night is never convenient. Right. And to do something together with other married couples, you know, if all you're talking to is your kids or, um, you know, and some of you have kids that's moved out or if all you're talking to is fish or if all you're talking to is, you know, that dogs. that wild hog or that deer that you want to go hunting to or your dogs or your cats or whatever the case is, then, you know, that's a little crazy. You need other married couples that you can get around and and do things together with. Um, in a holy atmosphere, yeah. but then also you need times where you guys get together just by yourself. And so I celebrate you guys for coming together like this, but man, things are opening up uh, here in Illinois, and you're able to get <laughs> together and have more than six people at a table and all that stuff. So, um, Enjoy you know, I'm, I, I said, listen, I want to push this because it's so necessary. And the thing is, the ones that don't make the time, those are the ones that end up wanting to, uh, you know, having all these issues and, and all these... Let me say it this way. Even if you think you don't need it, maybe somebody else needs you to be there that you can be an encouragement to them. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because God didn't create us to just be to ourselves and Individual. just, well, we got this and, yeah. and all that. So sometimes that sacrificial love towards others as well uh, will just help. So anyways, I let's get to I started to say this um, one more point with the serving love and then we'll move on. Romans chapter 12, verse 10. I started to say this. Paul was writing... Uh, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he said, be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love mm. in honor, giving preference to one another. And um, it's so true uh, that you can give preference to everybody else. But if you're not giving preference to your spouse first and that whole God first and your spouse second and then your children, um, that is holy, that is biblical, but don't confuse your relationship with God being your relationship with the church right? Um, or with the organization that's or the right. ministry that's of good. the church, right? So that's not, no, honey, God first, so we can't go on our date. No, go on your date. Don't um, we're plan, talking about, in no, other no, words, we're not saying plan your you date can't tell night your pastor on church I'm night. Serve. Yeah. <laughs> right. you're, you're here with me because <laughs> I'm a pastor too, so if we're not saying that, yeah. we're just... So, yeah, because people do that, too. They'll say, well, you say you always say, you know, uh, relationship first or, you know, our relationship with our spouse is is second to God. And it's like, yeah, but, um, 
you, did you have to plan it? Like out of all seven days, you could not plan it on a day that was not, and the exact time that there is church, you know, like, yeah. so, but, <laughs> but, you know, and sometimes we're not talking about like, you know, everybody yeah. plans vacations Vacation or doesn't whatever. Mean you can. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, Oh you gosh, know. if pastors can fix this, if it's going wrong, if pastors can fix <laughs> fix this <laughs> but the whole being kindly affection again like you know you, the people that know you most should be able to testify the same thing that those who don't know you as well they should be able to yeah. say the same thing about you right that you're a person that's kindly affectionate you know and and the people that are closest really their testimony has way more weight than someone else's testimony that's not as right. close and so sometimes we look over those things because we don't want a certain image right. with other people but what about again what about this person right what about our image in god's eyes what do we look like to him? That should matter more than our image in others' eyes. Exactly. Right? I remember one time asking uh, one of the older kids, um, I said, you know, am I not the same person in the pulpit as I'm out of the pulpit? And, and you know, and, um, and she said, no, not really. And I was like, I was shocked by that. I said, well, what do you mean? And so she was saying, well, you know, um, you know, you're, you're, you're happy and you're cheery and all that stuff and, you know, you, you smile. Talk a lot. You, you talk a lot, you know, around church and all that. But, um, but and she was talking about during the week, like when I come home from the office and, and, you know, she came home from school. And I was like, oh, sweetie. I said, I understand what you're saying. I said, here's the thing. I said, by the time you get me, all my words are gone, you know, because, <laughs> man, we just have a certain amount of words. And I said, but I appreciate you sharing that. I will work on that. It helped him to notice Help and make me, an yeah. adjustment at home because it's like he didn't realize he just when he comes home, all he wants to do, he hasn't been able to do it for years because we've taken in these other kids when they were older. But all he wants to do is take off his pants. Just take off go, my pants. Go to the bed. Just be and, like, free. Lay down. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, I don't know why. It's just so <laughs> comfortable just to be in your underwear. I mean, yeah. Uh, so when, my son, when my son, and a shirt. when my oldest son, uh, when he left just a few weeks ago, um, and our other, our little kids were in school, he was like, oh my gosh, we came home early one day, and he's like, oh my God, I can take off my pants. <laughs> he's like, yeah, they're coming off. You know, like, yeah, I haven't thought about that, babe. Glad you're happy. You know, but. Uh, <laughs> That's why they gotta go. I mean, you know, they just gotta go. I'm sorry. I'm a little weird, but. But those, those times are, are critical because they're important to God. Yeah. This is the most important calling. We talked about this in the lady session as far as our calling. You mm, know, we, that was so spiritual. One of, the callings, <laughs> one of the callings we have is to be in that supernatural relationship that God has purposed and ordained. And even, like I said, even if you had a bad um, motive or you, you know, you'd say, well, no, ours don't apply because it's not like God led us to one another. We met in a club or we met, you know, whatever. Yeah, God can restore and God can change circumstances and bring you to a place where it is now. It's holy and it's reverent and it's, you know, so you don't have to worry about the origins necessarily. Just submit your ways to the Lord. Yeah. And as you give him your heart and you, you know what I'm saying, you receive his salvation, then everything else and you yield to his ways, everything else will fall into place. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about serving love because it's, we're, yeah. we're losing a whole bunch of time. Not serving. We did serving. We're on number four. Uh, oh, you finished with serving? I'm not finished yeah. with that at oh. all. Yeah. Yeah, well, we were no, done. Okay. <laughs> well, I just wanted you to did think. Say that already. You I said just wanted to things. think as far as, um, uh, well, I'd even say true, sacri true sacrificial giving will also inspire loving service to your spouse. And Galatians 5.13 says believe that we should um, love, by love, serve one another. And uh, let me see here. Oh, you did say that as far as me first. Oh, you were we, teaching it. We, we did oh, you were. Work. Okay, I see. We, we touched it, baby. You do, girl, on. you're doing good. But, Remember um, what I was saying, ladies? We're serving. <laughs> it's okay. Serving <laughs> must be practical. <laughs> I knew it. I knew she was saying some stuff. <laughs> um, serving must always be practical. You know, um, in 1 John 3, 18, it says that, you know, let us love uh, in word. Um, not just in word or, or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And so... Um, men, I would say this as far as us being intentional, and even ladies, you know, what are some ways that you can serve? Mm -hmm. You know, for instance, um, we did talk about the five love languages in the last um, session some. My wife's, one of her top love languages is acts of service. And mine is physical touch, thank you, Jesus, and words of affirmation. Hers was acts of service and quality time. But I did not know that acts of service was so high on the list before we got married. It's only after we got married, which 
was my mom's own. And it changed. It, it changed. She just flipped the script on me. But <laughs> if I'm just telling her and affirming my love to her and what I'm saying to her and, you know, um, and we talked about how, you know, just because I say I do, sometimes she asks the question, do you? Like, regardless of how much I say I love you, um, sometimes it's not just expressing love, but when, when wives start feeling like they're lacking that love, they start asking the question, well, do you love me? Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I just told you I love you, but, you know, but do you, I mean, why do you love me? You know, my wife, I was, I was messing with them, telling them the truth about you and, and how even though I would just, I would say I'm a very loving husband. Would you agree with that? Yes, you Let are. Let the record show she says, yes, I am. <laughs> um, you know, there are still times where we'll be talking and she's like, why do you love me so much? And, and um, there are people that have done research asking a, a bunch of women as far as that. And they've come to find out that deep down, there's a, in the back of their mind, there's this insecurity that regardless of how much they feel loved, that there's still this question as far as, well, does he really love me? Or, or will he always love me? Or, um, you know, will he move on to, to, to someone else or something like that? And so that's why when there are certain things or certain triggers, all of a sudden she may start feeling this insecurity as far as, you know, well, I don't feel, like I, I even mentioned how there was one time where um, because I said something to you a certain way, it took you back to when um, maybe a way that your dad would say things to your mom. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it caused a trigger because she felt like, oh, I'll never, you know, and I, I don't want to be like that. And, and it made her feel like I thought that she was slow, mm-hmm. you know, or just not that smart or, or whatever. And it, it created this trigger in her. And so, um, so that's why we got to be practical and intentional. So there are things that, that yeah. I'll do, like, for instance, I noticed that I... To this day, I, I can't stand to do dishes. I don't like doing dishes. But she's, uh, she's so busy. <laughs> I heard a mm. um, <laughs> she's, she's so busy and she's wired a certain way to where, um, you know, I, we're not perfect. There are times in our house that dishes will stay in the sink for two days. Yeah. It's you know, bad. Um, it starts this, stinking. Yeah, it starts smelling bad. And it's not because we're just lazy. I actually enjoy washing dishes. Well, you may be thinking, why don't you use the dishwasher? I don't trust the dishwasher. <laughs> so, yeah, we do the extra mile. Um, but, um, and I actually enjoy it. It's just that sometimes it's just, you know, it's like, am I going to sleep or am I just going to be? Sometimes it's just worth losing sleep and having a clean kitchen and everything smelling great, right? And then sometimes for me, I get, I, I do that too much. They're probably thinking, like, oh my like, gosh, the Estrada's <laughs> is nasty. <laughs> And sometimes I do it so much that it's like, I need to sleep or I'm going to be very ugly, right? So, like, I can feel it. It's not good. It's way too much that I've made that decision and we to have, sacrifice. We have the sleep. kids helping, too, and everything. Yeah, but and they're of age. Well, the oldest one is of age, so we're... 12-year-old. You know, she thinks she's a slave. Yeah, so... She said, I think parents I feel like give birth to kids slave. just to have them as slaves. I said, you were in here breathing my oxygen <laughs> for free, and you want to, you know, the nerve of you. You better... <laughs> Hold your breath. Don't be breathing my oxygen. Or go outside if you want to breathe my oxygen. Um, but uh, <laughs> I just tell her. I, I, we laugh at her. We're like, oh, that's so funny. Just stop believing these lies, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get it done, right? Because we already know what the deal is. Like, you can't be. You got to learn how to be responsible and take care of these things. Yeah. But you know. Um. But it happens. And then in those times when he. Uh, decides. I know how much he hates dishes. Mm. One of the reasons why he hates dishes so much, though, is because the sink is always lower. There's a bunch, there's a big discrimination against tall people. <laughs> the sink Can is I get an lower. Amen? Thank you. And so, and this, I didn't find out this until years later. So I was already compassionate enough because I was like, well, you know, he he hates it. It's something he hates. I don't mind. I actually enjoy it. I actually enjoy it because I don't have to think. Tall it gives my matter. brain a break, and I can daydream and stuff, and I can just, or I can pray or whatever, you know. I can pray in the Holy Ghost and wash dishes. You're so. Uh, but so I, I actually enjoy it. It's one of those things, you know, it's kind of a weird thing that you enjoy. So anyway, I like it. I just put on some music and just kind of, or listen to preaching while I'm, you know. Side note, can you all just really honestly think about tall people? These mirrors that you guys put that's like, so low and it's you so, know i never noticed what he goes through until he brought it up like sometimes when we go on the small plane from champagne to um chicago. to chicago you know the smaller planes for us we always go from dallas to tulsa or one of those other places it's Pray like a smaller for us, plane she doesn't 
<laughs> she's not so compa- funny. She laughs at me because I- <laughs> he can't fit, and I'm like, oh, honey. <laughs> I'm so sorry. He's like, they don't. They never think of tall people in these don't situations. Don't talk if I got to use the bathroom <laughs> going in. It. <laughs> it's hilarious. Like, and I'm so, going to pee all over your stall <laughs> since y'all didn't think about us. <laughs> so he, he explained it to me one day about the dishes. And he's like, the reason why is because the sink is so low. And at first, it takes me so long to do the dishes. So I'm bending over. And my back hurts. And, you know, my legs are hurting and all this stuff. So I realized, I said, um, I said, oh, I didn't even realize it was that bad for you. I know you hated it, but I didn't know why you hated it. You know, so that even made it even better to realize. But so when he does do the dishes. You're blessing tall people in here right now. I just, I just want you to know. Cause when it's like, he does. That's why, honey. That's exactly why. That's, that's exactly why. Plus, you know. I don't want to do it. But, um, you know, when he does make the effort to do it, I know how much more of a sacrifice. And really, yeah. it's a service. Really, I know he's just trying to get um, points, you know. And, and the thing is, I... Even, unashamedly. Uh, right. The thing is, he could do it unashamedly because... And it still works. It still works because I'm like, even though I know he's just trying to rack up points, but my thing is, but the fact that you want to rack up points, you know? <laughs> the fact that you want to rack up points, it's beautiful. Do you, see, you see what I'm doing, honey? <laughs> And so I love it. And so, you know, it's, it's okay. Sometimes, um, I remember one time we were helping a couple, and the wife was just so angry because she was just like, he's just doing that because we had to talk about this, and he's doing it, you know. He's, he's just like, and I'm thinking, I'm like, are you listening to yourself? The fact that he made the effort, even though, okay, he may not have noticed before, and whatever the situation is, right, but you brought it to his attention, even though it was a, through a fight, right? And so you brought it to his attention, and he's trying. He's not doing great at it but be happy there's okay what it was is she was like I'm always doing the work for date night you know like I'm always figuring it out for him he didn't want to have to think of it it didn't it's not that he didn't care he loved date night he looked forward to date night every time but it was like she was getting tired of being the planner for it you know and he assumed that she loved it because she was always on top of it she was always fast with it and she's quick with it she's a close friend of mine and she's like that she's just way ahead like you know, like five weeks ahead. So she's, he's thinking she enjoys it. I'll let her do it. Right. And then we have a good time anyway. So he's not thinking it's an issue. So now she brings it up and she's complaining about it. And so for her, it's like, well, I just feel like you don't care, you know, cause you know, I'm running out of ideas here and you, you just don't care. And so he's like, that's not it at all. So anyway, we talk about it, we're dealing with it. And then, um, so he says, uh, he says to her, or the, uh, the next week or whatever, he, he comes up with an idea or whatever. And she's just like, oh, Lord, like, it's not even genuine. Like, he's just doing this because I said so. You know, it's like, you can't have it both ways. You're going to have to celebrate the wins, right? <laughs> and, and think of it this way. Change your perspective and think. It matters to him that you were feeling that way. So right. him even making an effort, even if he makes a mess of it, it's like, oh, that's so cute. You know, like, that's adorable. Yeah. I know you care. So it's, it's so vital because even so another thing that I'll do is uh, I found out later on in my life that I actually enjoy cooking. I didn't. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to think so. You know, and she's a great cook, but uh, <laughs> I enjoy the plating and the colors and the flavors and just the art behind it. He's made it. us food bougie. And yes. if you don't know what that is, that's just like we're food snobs. Like we're very particular about food. So yeah. anyway. So but um, but anyways, um, there have been times where if I cook for the family or something because I, you know, and to help her. That Especially she can, after my last child. Yeah, that she can get so accustomed to that. And there was one time where she was like, oh, honey, I wish you didn't put such and such, you, you know, in this or whatever. And there was one time for me, because I'm, I'm expressing my love to you in this. And I, I was able to communicate with her and say, you know, honey, uh, I would really appreciate if you if you just recognize what I did first. Yeah. And say, sweetie, I'm so glad that you did this. You know, because again, words of affirmation is mine. So I, I want to hear that. I want you to express, I'm expressing love to you in my acts of service. So before you critique my cooking, <laughs> that the kids like my food better than yours anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they really do. <laughs> you know, but before you want to come in here and critique, you know, at least express some gratitude and, and i didn't even realize she I didn't realize doing, you know i thought it was one of those things you know we talk about what's this and what's that we always talk about our food we comment on our food y'all to the point where we were out eating one time and there was a camera crew that was in that restaurant <laughs> and they came to us and they said after we finish our meal they're like do y'all mind just like doing this all over again but we get you on camera it was like for food network or something 
<laughs> yeah. They got us on camera. There was one anyway. person just last week. Somebody was like, "Yeah, you didn't tell me you were a celebrity." I said, "What are you talking about?" They we said, "We saw you ago. on TV." I was like, <laughs> "He's like, you saw the episode? We were looking for it. We never saw it." But anyway, so I just thought it was one of those things, and I had noticed that he really enjoys this. Like it's like an art to him. For me. Cooking is more like a chore. I do it because we have to do it. Like, we got to eat. Then I think about, okay, we need the nutrition, so we need some greens in there, whatever. You know, I'll just do it. But I'm not doing it with pleasure and with, like, I'll try this and risk this and, and do I'll that. And I'll say, put some love in it. Yeah, he's like, put love in it. And I'm going to put love in this, all right. I love y'all <laughs> enough to, to get you, you know, get some nutrients in you and get it down your belly. So, but him, he likes to... He loves to explore I don't eat to live. and I live exploring to eat. flavors. And then if he sees something that inspires him, he's ready to get in there and do something. You know, for me, I'm like, I, I don't have time. I, I just, I don't enjoy that like that. I more, I enjoy eating it, you know, but to actually prepare it, it's like, baby, what we, we, out of this whole thing, we, we communicated with each other and yeah. we were able to see that, first of all, he had to acknowledge and admit that he actually enjoys it. It's an art to him. He's an artist. Mm -hmm. So he really enjoys that. It's like an art to him. Artiste, thank you very much. <laughs> and then um, the no, next what, what thing she means is I used to I used to paint and I draw you know had a graphic stuff. design company and all like that. Really good with so. that stuff. So but I don't get to do it as much. So cooking it was home, like a release for like him. An and we had a design me. business and stuff like yeah. that. So um, so I we just came to that conclusion and we were able to say okay we don't have to be stuck in traditional roles right. If you're okay with doing the majority of the cooking take care of us, then I'm okay with you cleaning. You take care of me. Yes, oh, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. Cleaning. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that part too. But, you know, like, I'll... I'll, I don't mind cleaning because I enjoy cleaning. Again, it's one of those things my brain can check out and I'm just going through the motions. You know, I can pray, I can whatever, listen to something or whatever. So I'm okay. I'll clean up right behind you. I'll do your chore. I'll do, you know what? I'll do whatever as long as you're okay with that. So he said, I'm good with that. Okay, I'm good too. Let's work, with, let's work it out, you know? So, so what you're saying, celebrate the little things. And serve in that yeah, way too. Serve like in that just, way. It's loving on each other. So number four is... Um, is love freely given, mm -hmm. right? And, and so one of the most misunderstood aspects of marital love is the fact that love, that true love is, is totally voluntary. Yes. Totally unforced. It's a decision. Totally free of manipulation or control, right? Yeah. And, um, and so, you know, God declared this in the way that he loved his people when he promised in, in Hosea chapter 14, verse 4, where he says, I will heal their backsliding and I will love them freely. Yes. Right? And so this word freely in this verse actually means voluntarily. So God chooses to voluntarily love us. Uh, in other words, he's explaining that his love can't be forced. No. His love can't be manipulated by others and that he's chosen to love his people for his own reasons. And so um, Jesus, you know, he, he said the same thing about the love that motivated him to go to the cross where he says, therefore, my father loves me yeah. because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself in John chapter 10. Um, and, and so Jesus was declaring that no one was controlling his decisions, or right? Manipulating. Or manipulating him, but yeah. he was voluntarily giving up his life because he loved us. So the reason why this aspect of love is so important in maintaining um, our relationship is because many husbands and wives would, would say things like, you know, they've fallen out of love with their mate, mm -hmm. um, and at the same time declare that they have a controlling, manipulating, uh, pressuring, nagging, jealous, or clingy spouse. And so all of these behaviors destroy the voluntary nature of love. And, it should and always be a free choice. It should be a free choice. And couples also relate that, you know, when they first dated and became engaged, that they did so out of a voluntary choice. Mm -hmm. But now all they sense is force or control strangling the desire to love. Yeah. And so... Um, the best way... Uh, I said this, or I was alluding to this, or getting to this, in the women's um, session before this. But, you know, the best way to lead someone to love is to love. Right. I mean, it's like um, a mother, uh, you know, you, for a child, a baby, you, you don't teach them by principle to smile. You smile them into smiling, right? So you keep smiling at the baby. Oh, you so, ah, ah. And what happens? The baby at some point begins to smile, all right? So you smile them into smiling. God loves us into loving. And in order to keep a love and maintain a love, you're going to have to give that love. Right. You're going to have to give sacrificially. You're going to have to serve. You're going to have to do all these attributes that, and, and really, again, it comes from a decision. Like I said, it's a free choice. And we said this last night. You got to come to the place where I'm going to walk in love 
no matter what they do. Yeah. If you can come to that place, and it's not always easy on the flesh. Don't get it. Don't, don't get me wrong. I understand. Like, I have a flesh just like everybody else. And it's hard, you know, to walk in love when uh, someone is just taking that for granted. But I am saying it is possible, though. And so you'll have to be led by God on how exactly that looks. Yeah. In other words, what is it that I can do that will reach them? Right. That will soften those hardened areas in their heart that for whatever reason it's hardened and they're not allowing me in or they're not allowing, you know, every time we get to this place or every time, you know, we touch this subject, my spouse seems to close up. They seem to be, you know, they they don't want to show that, uh, um, you know, weakness weakness or whatever it is. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. That's what I was looking for. And so. Rarely do you give me the word that I'm looking for, but anyway. Sandwiches. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, we always have like a bunch of inside jokes, but anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so when when we're looking for those opportunities, Lord, help me to understand, or why do they always shut down when this happens or whatever? The Lord is able to reveal those things to us and show us, right? And so, because if you try to, the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because the temptation would be to try to manipulate or control in a way where it's like, well, if you do this, then I'll do this. That's more that contractual love, you know, contract love. That's more like a that's the human kind of love. You give and I give. It's and, a give and take. And we have such a wonderful example in Jesus. And you'll notice that all these attributes just seems to like flow together because yeah. even, you know, this still goes into like sacrificial and even serving love. And yeah. um, I heard Jimmy Evans say this. He said that um, you will be at your happiest when you're serving. Yeah. Um, and you'll be most unhappy when you are waiting to be served. Yeah. Right. And so even in your church, if you find a place to serve and, you know, it, it's amazing how while, while you're serving, you'll you, you find yourself as you're pouring out, even though it might be challenging on the flesh sometimes, um, you'll be at your happiest while you're serving. And and we can notice, like even with Jesus, notice that he's called a shepherd and the way that he leads. In other words, the shepherd leads from the front. So men, as we've been talking about being intentional, uh, he's not known as a sheep herder that drives from behind, but he, he leads from in front and he guides. And, um, and so as we're, you know, even with this loving freely and not being manipulative, um, you know, if you're a spouse that's attempting to control um, and manipulate, you know, what you're doing is you're actually destroying the very thing that you're trying to strengthen and, um, and renew, Right. And so it must be a free choice. Again, you can't force your spouse to love you, but what you can do is work on yourself. You can't control what the other person does, you know, um, but God sure would appreciate if you could control yourself, yeah. right? So we, we don't have control over other people's actions, or you don't have control over your spouse's actions, but you do have control over your own action. And so if you fall into this trap, I would say to you to ask your spouse for forgiveness for that, and um, and 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 make a choice to return to loving freely without nagging, without control, you know, seeking their best interest yeah. and, and encourage activities that promote freedom and trust. Um, because if you can't seem to give up these behaviors, you should seek, honestly, you should seek personal counseling just for yourself mm-hmm. because there's some deep-rooted thing in there. I mean, if you can't get it with the help of the Holy Ghost and, yeah. and all that, which I believe you can. We're not against counseling. Professional counseling. If you do that, I encourage you to find a Christian counselor. Mm-hmm. That understands like, the threefold nature of Yeah, men. not just like Christian counselor by them putting Christian counselor, but, um, you know. That knows the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yeah. So um, I encourage you to do that because it's, it is a trap. And, and as we learn, like we said, if as a husband I'm having a challenge with my wife or me feeling honored the way that I feel I should, then instead of just trying to come to her and change her, then I work on my ability to love her as Christ loved the church. And then I realize that in return, there's a shift and she'll start loving me or I'll start feeling loved the way that, um, and, and honored the way that, that she should. All yeah. right? Uh, we have time for the next one? Yeah, we got a little bit of time. Submissive love. We're in number five. We're like, there's six more after this, so. <laughs> we're not going to get through them all. Yeah. Not the way we're moving. Um, Notice, though, that before Paul commanded a wife to submit to her husband or a husband to love his wife, he actually commands both to submit to each other. And I mentioned this. I alluded to this last night. Ephesians yeah. 5.21 says, submitting to one another 
Ephesians 5, 21, submitting the fear of God. to one another in the fear of God. In other words, in other words, ref, uh, reverencing who's before you, who's watching you, that consciousness. We were talking about it a little bit last night. So in other words, I'm doing this as unto the Lord. For me, that's what helped me to actually do this the right way. Yeah. I don't, it's not to... Uh, it's not in our natural nature to submit to me. It's not, it's not for the sake of him. It's really for the sake of it's, him. It's so bad that, um, again, because remember, we knew each other, and we were like play cousins, you know, so a <laughs> little incest That was my here. play cousin on my mother's um, side. But it was so bad to the point where she thought she was stronger than me. Like, she, she just saw me as, like, one of her um, brothers type thing, and she, remember that? Like, you, she was like, oh, you're actually stronger than well, I am. Like, physically stronger. She, I mean, she's strong, but she just thought that I was just, like, some little weakling. And um, <laughs> I really did. I ain't gonna lie. I did. <laughs> Well, because my brothers, most of my brothers are like really like where well, they used to be anyway. And so they're football players and they're big and they're strong. And two of them were like uh, personal trainers. And so they, <laughs> my, my husband used to joke around and like and say, oh, my gosh, you're what would you say? Your 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 leg is like a uh, rhino. It was like a horse legs, you horse legs or twice of, twice the size of my arm. Or, I don't know what it know, was. Right. But Their muscles had muscles. But <laughs> yes. mine, I have muscles, too. It's just it's longer. And so it's, you know, a little bit more. <laughs> So he, you know, I, I, so I would, I, I just, you know, I would see my brothers and I would see him and I'm like, oh, he's not that well. strong, you know, but uh, that's what I would think. And that's what I would compare it to. And even we remember and this she's, issue. Let me say, she's so encouraging too because we started working out together and I, I did start getting stronger, you know, and, and more <laughs> cut to one day. No, she, I used to make fun of his legs and say, you hold got on, let me chicken tell this. legs. She, no, but she's I'm saying, so lovingly, I'm I know, I, I, she so lovingly said, honey. Your legs look like frog legs. And I said, what? I said, is that, you know, she was trying to compliment me. She said, well, they used to look like chicken legs, but I mean, she said this, you know, it well, has so much form in it and everything. I said, well, thank you so much. I, you know, said, I again, thought it was encouraging because frog legs are really Yeah, you know, celebrate, celebrate the small <laughs> wins, right? You, you know, dissected a frog? <laughs> yeah. is that, is I that was that just thinking of when I dissected a, dissected a frog. Was that encouragement, was you guys? <laughs> I felt encouraged after I understood what you were trying to say, you know. <laughs> he said, well, yeah, so that's I better than chicken legs. Celebrate that as yes. a win, yes. I really was being genuine. But, <laughs> but um, what were we saying? Oh, Submit mutually to submitting to yeah. one another. It's in fear of God. Yeah. And it's, uh, again, it's for the purpose of, hey, I'm reflecting what you've deposited in me. God paid so much to put everything in us yeah. that he put in Christ. Jesus was not just our um, substitution, but uh, what the Bible says, our propitiation. And so, in other words, he, he was our substitute, but he was also, he fulfilled everything that God wanted in us, he put in Christ. And then he placed us in Christ. So we placed have... Placed Christ in us. Yeah, and, or yeah, placed both, Christ in us, both. both. And so we now have everything, and it costs so much because Jesus was a man that knew no sin, but yet he became sin for us. So every time we bring glory to God, it's not just to please him, although we do have that desire in us. Everybody has the desire to please their father. But it's even beyond that. It's what it does for him. It brings glory. And why do we want to bring glory? Glory is signifying light and that it attracts people that are in darkness, that are broken, that are lost, that are, you know what I mean, are, are in bondage. And so... All of this, as I mentioned to the ladies in our earlier session, this is for the glory of God. Your marriage flourishing and you walking in the God kind of love, it's not for your sake only. It's not just for your peace. It's not just, but although that's a benefit of it, thank God for that, you know, but it's for the testimony of God in you yeah. and God, everything he deposited in you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So another scripture was First Peter chapter 5, verse 5, uh, where it says, All of you be submissive one to another, mm -hmm. and be clothed with humility, for God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Yeah. And so notice how Peter also associates humility with all believers being submissive to each other. And so in reality, as she was talking about, it's not, uh, it is only a prideful and independent attitude that refuses to seek a solution yeah. and common ground with others. It's just, it's just rooted in pride. And so, um, you know, 
how can you tell if you're unsubmissive? Let me go over these real quick. Um, does your mate tell you that you're not receptive to hear his or her opinions or ideas? Do you make independent financial or parenting decisions that create conflict in your marriage? Have you been told that you're verbally harsh when conversing? Mm. Are you unwilling to compromise over minor issues of disagreement? If so, these are unloving and unsubmissive behaviors that will only hinder you and your spouse growing together in love. Yes. And so um, I, we encourage you to take the opportunity today to acknowledge your fault be before God and your spouse. And, um, you know, you can ask God for a submissive heart to your towards your spouse. You and know? here's the thing. You know, we talked about a little bit about roles yesterday. I, I touched on it a little bit. Um, I know that I think, you know, when he's, when God says to submit to one another, again, that means just to yield yeah. to one another. In other words, it's okay to listen yeah. to your spouse. If you're, even if you're not the, uh, the final decision maker, you know, um, or, which would be the man. Um, but with that being said, I know that sometimes um, a lot of women, you tend to struggle, we tend to struggle because we think about, you know, uh, wh whether the man is trustworthy in that area. Like, right. let's say he's done horribly with finances, for example, and it's like, well, the husband's supposed to lead, but I can't trust him with the finances because this and this happened and da da da, da you know, and it's like, those things are real. And, and it's like, and man, if you're not, you need to give that up. Well, I was going to say, that's what, that's what submitting to one another is. In yeah. other words, you acknowledge that's probably because it's not his strength. Right. And that doesn't mean he's not leading just because if he says, well, you know what, honey, I realize you're better at this than I am. And, and, and acknowledging that, okay, she's probably the better one. We don't have to get stuck in our roles, like, we, you know, or in traditional roles. You yeah. know what I mean? In other words, like you have to be the cooker or I have to be the cooker. I'm the, I have to, I'm the one that has excuse to cook. Me. And Chef. Chef, Thank excuse you. me. You know, but and, yes, and you chef. have to be the, the one that does this or whatever. Not getting stuck in that, but just realizing if you're better submitting, yielding yeah. to one another. Because ultimately, when it comes down to it, though, somebody's got to make the final decision. Right. And there has to be a decision made sometimes. I start to share you know? this with, with the men. Um, as far as early in the marriage, I gave that over to her as far as finances. the finances. And that's, it's not that I was bad at it. Um, I really wasn't. It's just that. You know, it's something that she um, was doing. There was a time where I came to her. I was like, if you can't deal with this with the spirit of faith, then I'll, I'll, I'll take it back. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's not that she was bad with it, but I, I start to share how early in marriage we would be at conferences and we'd get into arguments uh, in church because um, at the time I was more generous. Um, not that she wasn't generous. It's just, you know, sometimes you think you're generous until you meet somebody else that's just more generous than you are. And it's like, well, man, that's really generous. That was the case. And also I was the one dealing with the finances. So right. I'm like, he's just saying some frivolous number and I'm looking at the numbers. We ain't got it. What do you mean? <laughs> We're not doing that. Like that's irresponsible, you know? Yeah. And so we'd go back and forth and really it did come down to having a spirit of faith about it. And it I did. had to learn that over time, but. And the spirit of God will help you because I knew this, that um, my sewing, it's not that I was against saving. We saved. It's just that my sewing would always outproduce my saving. When you trust and depend upon God's system of increase, I mean, I know it's church. You can't outgive God and all. Let me tell you something. If you're part of this church or part of another church, if your church has a certain vision or things that they're pressing towards, I encourage you, if you've been receiving spiritual things there, that you got to sow into that and, and just give extra. And Because in, God has placed it in the earth. As long as, it's there, as, long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest and so at the time um you know I, maybe i just had a little bit more revelation about it but she was you did over, yeah and so what i did one time was we went to a certain conference and the lord because again this would be an argument where you know where i'm like and men i told you guys how i was it was important for me to like not look like a soft man and and also i didn't want her looking like a dominant um woman and uh, and so i'm trying to smile while we're talking and she didn't want any kind of fiction like, no don't be smiling right now and you know and so people can kind of see don't be faking you know, worry don't about be, what's happening here because you know we're we, we're sitting close trying to, to the put front on smiling. you know you ain't happy everybody knows you're talking about the offering right now you know and um but this one particular one the lord said tell lynette you take care of our giving and i'll take care of the church's giving and so from the beginning, I said to her, I said, honey. This is before the service This started. is before the service I said, you're going to take care, all this week, you're going to take care of our giving, and I'll take care of the church's giving. That was such wisdom from God. Let me tell you why, though. I just realized this. This is why it oh, was fresh revelation. Wisdom. Fresh revelation. So 
it was two reasons. Uh, one, because again, remember I said God knows you and he knows how to reach you. He let it go and gave it to God. And because he let it go and gave it to God, God knew exactly what to do to get me because he had said to me, now God knows that I'm open to him and I want to be led by him. And for me, I'm thinking you're just being irresponsible. Mm -hmm. Like this is not like you, God telling you to do this amount or whatever. And so the Lord said to me, he said, if I prompt him in his heart to give a certain amount, do you want to be the reason why he didn't obey? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> not me. I don't want to be the reason. I want to obey. I want to follow your way. And he knew. He knew that was the perfect question for me because my heart was yielded to him. So that opened me up. And then my husband comes, and I just remember that. Then my husband comes and says, you're going to do the offerings for, for us personally all week. And I'm like, no, 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 don't put it on me. Don't put it on me. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. And he's like, no, 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 you're going to do it. And I'm just going to take care of the church offering. And I was just like, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. You know, so I'm sitting there like, oh, God, what's responsible, what's not? You know, I said, I could be heady. And she started asking me. She was like, how much you want to give? I said, and no. I would go, I'll say, how much? No, seriously, how much? You know, because I'm, the Lord already dealt with me, but I didn't even get the chance to tell him yet. Like, he already dealt with me, so how much? You know? And so what it did was it forced me to look inwardly and not look at what was there. And then I started, I mean, over time, but the, the revelation came concerning giving. The revelation came that dealt I, with that we could, fear of lack. Dealt with fear of lack, but also dealt with, I, uh, the revelation came that I, um, I can actually, we can actually give more than we are able to and I don't have time to get into that but there is a level of that and we don't really preach it a lot because we don't want to we don't want people to get confused or do things that are crazy or whatever but anyway we found breakthroughs in that yeah. financial breakthroughs and so it um, got it got to a point where it started scaring me <laughs> the yeah. way that she it would got get. to a point where I would say what's the Lord telling you so <laughs> I'll tell you this real quick so we were saving up for we didn't own our first home as yet and we were saving up didn't have a whole lot and um and so we were at this, um, this service, and the Lord, I can't even remember what the guy was preaching on because I'm having a discussion with, I don't want to say argument, but a discussion with the Lord, argument. you know, <laughs> the argument with the Lord because he's telling me, you know, go ahead and take all this money out of the savings and give it. I'm like, Lord, we already gave, you know, we were already uh, generous. You know, you we know that we're ourselves. generous. We Lord, we're stretched and, and all that. And I said, and not we just did. that, but the wife that you blessed me with, she's not going to be in favor of this <laughs> and all, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and all these different things. And so, and so while, while he's talking to me about this and I, you know, I just like, okay, let me listen up. She whips over like, she said, what's the Lord saying to you? I said, he's not saying anything. He's not saying a single thing. And then she goes and she starts praying in the spirit. I was like, great. Well, it was around offering time. Yeah. And I had, um, I didn't know the Lord was dealing with him, but I was sensing in my heart, mm, I think we should empty out our account. So she know? said, is the Lord telling you, she says, is the Lord telling you that we need to empty out that account and give it? And I said, I said, yeah, he's doing it. He said, yes, that's what he said. <laughs> and it wasn't to give to the ministry. It was to give to that man and woman of God mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who didn't need it as much as, I mean, we needed it. <laughs> they already got their own house. <laughs> They're already They're blessed. Well. They got their own place. They're doing well. You know what I mean? And, and, and we're, so, so I went and, you know, <laughs> true story, I went and we're just going to close with this, I guess. Yeah. It's a good place to close. But I, I went and I took the money out of the, um, out of the account and um, it's so bad. I, I held it in my hand. My hands was trembling and sweating. I took a picture of it because, you know, the devil would lie to you and say, well, there you go. That's where it goes. And um, I know this isn't a financial or giving seminar, but maybe somebody and married couples need to hear this. And so I went and I took a picture of it because, you know, thinking like, you know, just a quick thought. You'll never see this again. And plus, it looks so good in my hand. And so... <laughs> We went. We I was like, it. boy, you better hurry up and give it before we start <laughs> debating or I something. Got, I got two envelopes. Um, I gave one to, to the husband, and she gave one to the wife because, see, sometimes people will be like, oh, pastor, I'm going to honor you. But don't honor your pastor, not honor your pastor's wife. Amen. Right? I mean, because when you're, when you're gone and all those different things, she's still there. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, we, we said, listen, we've already given, um, you know, generously to the ministry. This is not for the ministry. This is for you. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, Pastor, this is for the church. <laughs> just, just so you know, this is for the church. Like, because people just want to keep their pastors broke. 
<laughs> Nobody in here. That's I'm talking about Catholic other places. Ways. Yeah, just, you know, That's let's Catholic. let's keep them broken. Uh, you, you know, God, you'll keep them humble, you know, if we can keep them broken. And, and so we said, listen, we've received so much from you, you know, spiritually. And they that preach the gospel should live with the gospel. But not just that. We should give you of our carnal things. And I mean, I was in, I was almost in tears because it's like, I, for me, it was, it, it was so precious to my heart, to our hearts. I think you cried. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, you know, one of the, you know, when you know, you know, you're generous when you think about it for some time <laughs> afterwards. And so I'd love to tell you that something happened right afterwards, <laughs> but no, I mean, you know, our business, you know, the church wasn't doing that well. Our business wasn't doing that well, but I'll tell you this soon after. We had a month where one of our businesses brought in nine thousand. I mean, nine times more what it normally it was did a few in weeks one month. Because we were there in oh November, yeah, a few weeks. And we yeah. got it in November. It was the um, end of November we found out. Not just that, but our first home, um, we were able to get it for. Um, it was a blessing. It was at ninety-eight thousand, where prior to that it was like a hundred and sixty thousand or something like that. But then I we also got it down to we, we got it down. I, I the the realtor was like. Um, and this testimony might help somebody. Um, the realtor said, you know, hey, I'm in charge of this. You know, I can get it for you for 95. I said, well, that's awesome. I said, what about 90? She said, yeah, you can probably get it for 90. I said, cool. I said, what about 85? She said, well, you know, it don't hurt to ask. We can ask for 85 and see what it is. I said, that's what? That's so great. I said, what about, what about 80? Um, no, I said 85. I said, what about 80? She said, um, I don't know. That's asking for a lot, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to put in the offer. I said, wonderful. I said, what about 75,000? She said, she said, ah, oh, man, that's, extra. He's she extra. said, that is just asking for too much. I mean, but you know, it's worth a shot. I said, great. I said, what about 70? She said, you're pushing it now. I said, that's exactly where we'll Stop. I said, we're going to offer 70000 She said, I don't think you're going to get it. I said, we're going to offer 70000 I said, you just put in the offer and we'll get it. A few weeks later, she called us. She, she was like, I don't think you're going to get it. But I knew that we had seed in the ground. Yeah. And I knew that we were honoring and walking in love towards each other. And I knew, I, I knew, you know, this was a breakthrough for us. It was sacrificial for us. We did this not for them, but unto the Lord. Yeah. Right? And so, um, and so she came back a few weeks later. She said, you're not going to believe this. She said, but... Uh, they took your offer for $70,000. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, praise the Lord. And this was a gift that kept on giving because a few years later, we were able to turn around and sell that house and um, make almost a, a, around $100,000 profit off of it. And even that same month also, you started to say this and I interrupted, I'm sorry, um, but we You're got forgiven. nine times as much income. I said that. Um, yeah, from our business than we had ever. And we hadn't since then. Like it was, so we knew it was, it was harvest. It was from yeah. the seed, the sacrificial seed we sowed. But so, had we not worked on this together, yeah, you know, we he could have been like, well, I'm, I'm the head of the house and I'm leading. So I'm saying this and we're going to do it. He could have done it that way, but that's a much harder way. Yeah. But when you give it over to God and then he just yielded. He said, yep. well, Lord, what do you want me to do? How yep. do I handle this? And that's what we're, we're at the point we're getting across. You know, sometimes yep. it doesn't matter if you're the head or not the head. The head, the purpose of the head is just because somebody's got to make that final decision. And right. God says to the wife, he says to Eve, he said to us that we're going to have to go under our husband. In other words, in other words, desire we, will our desire always will husband. always be to our husband. What does that mean? He created us now to rule and have dominion but because of the fall now there's there's always like this contention there's always like this you know headbutting almost and so we have to submit and yep. yield and and it goes both ways but i love how if you submit to one another you're glorifying god so even if you're the lead you're you, you being like you know i have to my wife has to be in agreement. God honors that. Yeah. Like before I make a decision, I want my wife to be in agreement. Yeah. God loves that and he honors it. And he will get your wife on board. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> He'll know how to reach your wife or vice versa. So whether you're, it doesn't matter the role is what I'm saying. So you could be the, the neck or whatever and yeah. you, can, you can just say, well, God, I don't believe, I believe he's going to lead us right down into a ditch, you know. So help him to see that. If I'm right, help him show him, reveal and, it to him. And understand that we're there to help each other and you, you may get it wrong sometimes, you may get it right sometimes. Yeah. Remember Sarah with Abraham, um, you know, she came up with the genius idea to help God out and say, you know what, why don't you Not marry so my, my, um, you know, my maid servant, servant, my maid servant, <laughs> And uh, maybe go sleep with her and have a child. Maybe that's what God wants. And what's Abraham going to say? Uh, I mean, he's not, <laughs> no, honey, no. 
right? <laughs> but we see that that created problems. But then when there was time where she said, it's time for you to let her go, God told Abraham, hearken to the voice of your wife, Sarah. Yes, yeah. So, you know, we're not always That's ever it. right at the same time, but we're there to help each other. And as we learn to work together and flow with each other, um, submit you know, to one and submit to one another, you know, God sees that, he, he honors, honors that, it. and, and there will be such great glory. blessings. So that that little testimony has turned into such a great thing to where we were able to get a nicer and better house in a neighborhood that we wanted to, to where now I just look. We're in agreement in our giving. Yes. Almost all the, not all the time. All the time. We're in agreement. Yeah. We're not complaining about it. And it was awesome. And, and then now our house, now I'm not saying this to brag on ourselves, but to brag on God. When you honor him in your marriage, when you honor him in your yes, finances, everything. when you honor him in the way that you walk in love towards other people, now the house that we got, um, I saw, you know, we could, it's, it's almost at half a million, yeah. you know, and we didn't pay near that much. It's yeah. just that following the spirit of God. You know, if you, you know, Brother Higgins said this, he said, Jesus appeared to him and said, if you'll just learn to listen to the Holy Spirit, I'll make you rich. Mm-hmm. He's not yeah. opposed to you being rich. Yeah. He's opposed to you being covetous. So I know sometimes as we talk about these different things, I, I don't know why. We weren't planning on saying this. I yeah. just felt led to do it. Yeah. So this is not no manipulation thing. But, man, you're part of this church. I encourage you. Honor your pastors. Yes. They're not going to ask for it. But yeah. as parents, you teach your kids to honor, to honor you. Not for your own sake, but for their sake. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so sometimes as ministers, we do have so to good. teach that you honor. It's not for our sake. It's it's for your sake. Mm-hmm. Paul said, uh, not that I seek the gift, because everybody will always be kind of, you know, suspicious. Like, oh, what's he, why are you saying that? Yeah. But I seek the fruit that abounds to your, your account. account. Yep. You all hear me? Yeah. I'd be teaching on this whether I was a pastor, whether, whether I was a preacher or yeah. not, because I've seen it work in my life yes. time and time again. Amen. So um, this was just a little gumbo, but I trust, I hope you received <laughs> something. Um, point from here it. and a point there. <laughs> <laughs> um, you have anything else before we go? I know we're over time. No. Nope. Um, Man, thank you. Um, thank you all so thank much you for, for your time us. and yes. uh, thank you for, for your attention listening and, and your attention. So well. We want to turn it over to uh, to Pastor Rhonda real quick. Wow, praise! I'm sad that it's over. We've been looking forward to this for so long. So much good truth and word. So thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedules and. Um, they have a lot going on. We follow them on Facebook, and we always see them here and there and stuff in their church and, and things. So we appreciate you taking the time to come and, and minister to us, to our church family, and it's been good. Uh, just a couple quick reminders. They'll be with us tomorrow. Um, if you don't have a home church, come out 8.30 and 10.30 here in the morning, and um, I think I've heard some people say I think they're coming to both services because they want to hear both of you uh, minister. So come out for that. And then also, um, if anybody could stay after for about 15 minutes and help us put this sanctuary back together for church uh, tomorrow, that would be great. Okay. Anybody watching on Facebook Live, thank you for joining us. Um, If you're in the area and can make it out tomorrow, come 830 and 1030. We'd love to have you come. God bless. Um,